here will tell you a story about one of us. and carrying on three spinnies and a coppice away. What's wrong? It's those birds. They eat up all my plants. You shouldn't get so upset about it. Oh, yeah? What should I do, huh? Sit back and applaud? You're always rushing around like a hornet. You try to do five things at once, and that gets you into trouble. And when you get into trouble, you get mad. Why don't you relax a little, take your pole, and go fishing? Hey, you know... Doesn't sound like such a bad idea. Harold, hey, pull up a rock and sit down. It's a great day for fishing. Sounds good to me. Ooh. Oh, I got a nibble. It's a whopper. Oh, boy. <sighs> got it. <laughs> oh, darn it. Sorry, you got away from me. I got it. Just as well, or I would have been furious. Okay, give it a shot there, Harold. It's so fired up, but you'll never catch anything. We'll see about that. Oh, I've had a 
enough of this. But where are you rushing off to, Peter? I'm going to enter the bicycle race. Wait a second. What bicycle race is that? It's the annual forest trophy down in the village, silly. So long. I'm faster than any old pig, that's for sure. I'm faster than anyone. I want to win that forest trophy. Yeah, that would be just great. I'm off to win the forest trophy! Huh? Oh, come back here, Harold! Your pole's underwater, blocking my line! Positions, please. On your marks. Get set. Listen, haven't you? Concentrate on your plants, give them a good watering, and everything will be fine. You'll see. Oh, do you really think so? Of course. Now get to it. There you go. Drink, little guys, and grow big and strong. And so, after a brief period, where once there were only a few sad seedlings, there grew a luxuriant field of beautiful sunflowers. Our friend Harold had learned to do one thing at a time, and to do it well. It was a lesson he never forgot.
advise the race organizers that the highway is blocked after the 20th kilometer and drivers must detour to the west. I don't need your silly little book of rules. So there's a long straightaway, and then I detour west at the 20th kilometer <laughs> sign. If you're going to depend huh? on the race instructions, old chap, you're going to lose this race, Rod One. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Carefully to me, both of you. I want a good, clean race with no low blows. Here are the cars, one red and one blue. Now well, they are perfectly alike as regards power, transmission, suspension, etc. As you know, our computer matched them with you boys at random. And here are the results. Wilbur drew the blue one, and Felix the red one. At this point, all that's left for me to do is wish you both the best of luck, and let's have a great race. Now, if you both step up to the starting line, we'll get things rolling. <clears throat> Ready? <laughs> On your marks. Thank you. 
Someone underwater will hear it and come to the rescue. Okay. Cliff and can't get her started again. Would you call that an accurate analysis of the situation? <laughs> now listen here, Sid. It's a matter of the utmost urgency. I want you to speed over to the mechanic's place and drag him back here. You get that? Consider it done. Now, don't you worry about a thing, friend. Melvin the mechanic is the best for miles around. He can fix anything. He'll have that car yours ready in a jiffy. And once you're back on land, you can continue the race. Uh, let's see what's wrong in here, where the trouble is. <laughs> well, that's not what you call a tragedy. Big ready in just two ticks, friend. There you go. Just don't ask for miracles, and don't start it up until you're back on land. Oh, guys, don't look at me. I'm strong, but not that strong. I'll never be able to carry that big, heavy car out of here. Now, don't you worry about getting back to dry land, youngster. We got a friend, Grover, who specializes in heavy work, and she'll be more than happy to oblige. <laughs> That's all right, youngster. Good luck to you. All right, Sid. Go find Grover and tell her to get a lazy carcass over here. Then put out a radio bulletin that car and driver have both been rescued. Consider it done. I just got a message. Wonderful news. Look. Let me see. Well, this is wonderful news. They found him and rescued him. He should be coming ashore any second now. Now 
now on, I'm going to accept all the advice I can get. The hair. How is the hair classified in the animal kingdom? The hair is a mammal of the Legomorpha order, of the Leporidae family and of the Lepus genus. They have long ears and very well-developed hind legs. How many species are there and where do they live? Five species in all belong to the Lepus genus. Among those better known are the common hare, found in almost all of Europe, in Western Asia and in Southeast Africa, and the so-called black-tailed jackrabbit, found in America. How do they live? Hares live alone and are active mostly at night. They do not dig burrows, but make do with shallow hollows in the grass in which they rest during the day. They are very wary, timid animals. How does it move? Hares get around by jumping. The great speed they can reach in this way is due to the fact that their hind legs are much longer than their front ones. What do they eat? They mainly eat clover and alfalfa and are particularly fond of cabbage. How do they protect themselves? Hares have many natural enemies. Dogs, foxes, wildcats, skunks, weasels and birds of prey. With all these predators, their only line of defense is to run. How do they relate to people? Not well, since hares have always been hunted and trapped by humans. Can they live in the city? No, unless in captivity. Well, have you all learned the lesson? <laughs> the moral of the story is concentrate on one thing at a time if you want to do it well. <laughs> oh, look who's coming! <laughs>